Marilyn Monroe always struck me as a dunce. She looked like a ditzy broad. You had to do like eight takes to get one line out of her. Be like, oh, here I am. Cut, Marilyn, that's great. We'll pick up the rest of that sentence after lunch. She was apparently, you know, passed around by the people in the studio system. That's of a human being, perhaps, you think? You speak of her as if she doesn't deserve anything. You I said she's her. a dunce, that I'm not attracted to her. It doesn't, how do you get from there to, I don't think she's a worthy human no, being? No, you say she got pissed You're, around and all this She stuff. did get passed around. That's I not on know. her. That was the way things were back then. Hi, everybody. This is another episode of Hot Boxing. I'm Mike Tyson and my co-host, Sebastian. And today we got here Mr. Bill Maher. Hey. How you doing, brother? I'm good. How are you, Mike? I don't know. Tell me. <laughs> wow. <laughs> What's That's quite a first question. Well, you have a, a little schmutz on your shirt, which I cleaned up. So, Thank you. Thank uh, you. <laughs> uh, I don't know what happened before I got here. And a little sweaty on the dome. So... I don't know what's going on in your world. Okay. I'm just guessing like a detective from what I see on the outside. Check me out. Explain <laughs> more. I don't know. Uh, when you were on my podcast a few weeks ago, Club Random, uh, we were all very impressed with just what a, what a good mood you're in. So tell us more about you. What are you doing lately? Well, uh, I'm pretty busy. I mean, I know you called me last night, but I was in Indianapolis doing stand-up. Uh, so I was on the road this weekend. That's great since... Because, well, it's certainly over in my world. There are some people who never want it to be over, but in my world, it's over. And, I agree. And I'm most, the same yeah. Way. And most of the people on the road I see, they're, they're not messed up at the shows anymore. And I mean, sure, it was fun and great to have a picnic for a couple of years, but I'm not going to do year three. I don't care what anybody says. So that's great that that's back in my life. And then, of course, I always have real time, my real job, my number one. Um, on HBO, and I'm loving doing this Club Random podcast. Yours did very well for us. People loved you Thank on it. You. We have people like, I think Jimmy Kimmel just dropped today for us, and I think we have Sammy Hagar coming up and Adam Carolla, and and then a lot of the kids, I call them the kids, you know, because there's these TikTok people and people who I don't, you <laughs> know, got, that, it's a 70, world I don't know that they're. I, ed- not, I have no idea. I just got involved with some of these people. These people are some people I don't know, but they got 70 million people following. Of course, them. yes. I said, How does this work? Right, right. Well, followers, Mike, you know, we used to just have fans. Followers, I always thought, were like people who trailed after Jesus and stuff if you had followers. But this is different, you know. They just they just live in a different world, the kids. And but I'm fascinated by it, and I love it that they come on and explain their world to me, and then I will explain uh, the world to them, because they don't know about that. Well, I was getting ready to tell you that. <laughs> I, was say, I don't say anything to them, but hey, you might be right. You know, I just I just can't understand the way the system runs, and it's not because um, yeah, it is because I'm ignorant. I just don't understand how it runs now. You got to be very, um, you can't offend nobody. You can't say a particular thing else. You're blackballed, uh, Joe McCarthyism or something like that. It's just really crazy. Got to be careful what you say. Can't hurt nobody's feelings. Do you feel like it's getting soft nowadays? Yeah. It's soft. It's been soft for quite a while. Uh, And it's not because you're ignorant, Mike. Uh, If that's the case, then I'm ignorant too. They're ignorant. They're ignorant, I think. I mean, it's so funny that they use the term woke Mm -hmm. when they're actually asleep. (laughs) <laughs> about so many important things in the world, and their priorities are all screwed up about so many things. I mean, they're oversensitive about so much nonsense, and they let so many important things go by. Um, so it's I don't think it's your ignorance. I think it's a lot of it is generational. I think it, the, the origin of it is that they were raised wrong. I think parents are too indulgent. I mean, I'm guessing that you're pretty strict with your kids or are you, are um, you is daddy an easy uh, mark daddy's a sucker daddy <laughs> and daddy's the easy way out you guys need any money you know daddy's a sucker especially for my daughter oh forget it she's getting married how much money you need what do you want to do in a hotel for a couple of months you know it's all out for your daughter that's just the way i am i right. never had money in my life when i was the age so i want to spend all my money on you on them this time around. I've been rich and poor more than anybody I know, but this time, I'm spending on them. 
But I mean, what about as far as, I mean, that's is one thing, the money part, yes. I mean, that is part of spoiling a kid. But there's also just the part of making life too easy for them. That's, I think, the problem that we get well, to I mean, where like, people are too sensitive and you, as, as you say, too soft, mm -hmm. is that uh, they've been raised in this bubble where none of the problems become <clears throat> their problems. Everything is taken care of by the parents. They call them bulldozer parents. You've heard that term? It means they no. bulldoze. They they get out in front of the kid and move away all the obstacles. Shelter them. Yeah. Shelter them. Yes, or I, I know that person, a bulldozer. I, I know that. Yeah, and then when kids get out in the world, they expect the world to treat them like they're overindulgent parents. See, I, I do have to say this. I have an older um, group of kids who saw me at my worst, who know what living hard is about, mm -hmm. and this is just um, me being very kind to them for all the shitty dad days, you know, that last for years. And yeah, I just, I just want to be kind and nice to them. Well, uh, you should always be kind and nice to your kids. No one is. <laughs> no, I'm I, certainly not saying I, don't be I was, kind I was or never, nice to I your was children. Never, I was never really there for them all the time. That's different too. But we're talking about parents, you know, and these are usually affluent type people who just uh, overprotect their parents. They just, it's, when it I was- It doesn't go for everything. Some kids around them, um, influent parents, they leave. They just leave the house. They don't want to be involved with that. Who leaves the house? Um, kids from influent parents. They're very rich parents. They leave. They don't want to be involved. I have a son. He was doing nothing for me. He has left. Yeah, they may leave. leave. They don't leave the money. Hey, no. They become trust fund brats in Hollywood. That's where they did. Yeah, they don't leave the bank account. They may son, leave the house. I have a son that won't take nothing. He's a missionary. He won't take nothing. Who's this? My one of my sons. Well, my he's he won't that's take fantastic. shit. He won't shit. But he just want to help people. Great, but that's all he want to do. It's, yeah, I think I'm, it's weird, but that's what he wants to do. It's wonderful. I mean, I wish there were more kids like that. Um, that's that's a wonderful story. That's not the typical story. If he wants to live that life, he can live that life, and I'm not going to force money on him. Just going to see how it works out for him. Right. I mean, that's it. Yeah. Every kid should be that. Every kid should say to their parents, "I don't want anything from you. I want to make it on my own." But that's not really what's going to happen. Mostly out there. Do you also think that that's probably an issue of why so many kids are having these issues of depression and suicide? And you know, it's all. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. I feel like now with the internet. And just like TikTok in general, and like all these apps, is just an oversaturation, right? An oversaturation of what people have: the money, the glitz, the this, the that, right? And it's not reality. It's not technically reality for for some other kids. So now they're kind of comparing, and negative things are happening. I don't know. Maybe that's my opinion on things. You know, whatever well. we think about this generation, um, their IQ is so much higher than our generation. No, it's not. What is uh, that? Hell their no. IQ is not higher. That's IQ. The, we were idiots back then, guys. We were, we were on the drug era, man. These kids, are, they're so, look, that's how they got, how did they create TikTok? You think these kids that? are not on drugs? Yeah, but I think these they're so much smarter than us. Okay, yeah, first of so all, much smarter than the us. human race has not evolved in the course of two generations to have a higher IQ. That's preposterous. <laughs> There's a certain confidence that comes with being properly groomed. There's an aura, a vibe. You can just tell by the way they carry themselves. We call that BGE, Big Groomed Energy. And there is only one way to get that BGE, Manscaped. We'd like to introduce you to the best and biggest ultimate hygiene bundle yet, the Platinum Package 4.0. Yes, sir. Manscaped is the leader in below-the-waist grooming. Now, trust them with the rest. Manscaped's brand-new Platinum Package 4.0 is the biggest bundle they've ever offered, giving you a bulk discount on Manscaped's top products. The Manscaped Platinum Package 4.0 is the one-stop shop for the man who deserves it all. They designed this package to allow you to fully align your entire hygiene routine with elite product. Inside this platinum package, you'll find their Lawnmower 4.0 trimmer, Weed Whacker ear and nose hair trimmer, Ultra Premium body wash, Ultra Premium 2-in-1 shampoo plus conditioner, Ultra Premium deodorant, Crop Preserve anti-chafing ball deodorant, Crop Reviver ball spray toner, and anti-chafing boxers. And you can't forget about the Shed Travel Bag to hold your goods while traveling. 
Lawnmower 4.0, body trimmer and weed whacker, nose and ear hair trimmer, featuring proprietary advanced skin safe technology to protect your delicate parts and hold. Both are waterproof so you can shave with less mess. In addition to shaving, you can now completely upgrade your shower routine with an ultra premium body wash and ultra premium two in one shampoo plus conditioner. You'll have your skin and hair feeling hydrated and smelling fresh. Don't forget to apply the aluminum free ultra premium deodorant for that cologne quality scent on the go. But it's not just your piss that stink. Your balls can stink, too. No one want no stinky balls, so thankfully their crop preserver, ball deodorant, and crop reviver, ball toner, can solve this problem for you. Once they touch your sack, <laughs> you'll never go back, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Manscaped even threw in two free gifts to their Platinum Package 4.0, the Manscaped boxes, and the shit travel pack. Bring your comfort and boxes to another level. The Platinum Package 4.0 covers all bases from trimming to showering to leaving the gym smelling nice. This is the best bang for your buck. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code HOTBOXING at manscaped.com. Again, that's 20% off with the free shipping at manscaped.com and use code HOTBOXING. Unlock your big groom energy with Manscaped. And remember, when you trim the hedges, the tree stands tall. Uh. So, so listen, what happened when um, hip hop was first created? Boom! Everybody, everything exploded. Everybody became more aware and more conscious. What? When hip hop exploded? Yeah. Well, I mean. Well, maybe not you. I mean, I was aware of hip hop just the way I was aware of every musical genre that came along. And, and you know, the same thing in the 60s when the British invasion happened and rock and roll, I guess, even before that. I wasn't around for that one. Nothing but, ever hit like hip hop in the history of music. Well, nothing ever hit your world. Yeah, yes, I agree. They, it hit lots of people's worlds. I agree. And, and, you know, music is uh, important to raise people's consciousness in some ways. I personally think that people way overrate how important music or art is. Musicians love to pat themselves on the back and say they're changing the world. I like plainly, to pat musicians plainly on the back. Plainly they're not. not. Why or else why the world would have been changed and it's not. Music doesn't change The world's anything. never changed. Exactly. The world's always been So changed. what happened with the big explosion? Nothing. No. So you don't think changed. artists though? You don't think artists have a positive influence in the world? I didn't say that. I said they don't change the world. Don't change the, the world. They change the thinking of the world. Yeah. Uh, uh, slightly. More than we anticipate. Like what? Like how is the world different? Is there not disease, hunger, invasions, brutality, everything, has, has that, more, everything has shitty more, that's has ever happened? more diseases been um, cured? Not by musicians. No, but I'm talking about doctors. It, it's, it's the whole spectrum of the world. Doctors, right. I don't know. Like Dr. Dre? Is that what we're talking about? <laughs> yeah, he was One, good at... Two, listen, right. he graduated. He wasn't a real doctor, <laughs> Yes, he Mike. did. He graduated from Harvard. Dr. Dre? Yeah. Not with that. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't know about that. And, and it certainly wasn't with a medical degree. Well, he can um, really pretty no, much... Just get real about it. Music is great, but it doesn't solve problems. It makes the shitty problems that the world has mm -hmm. a little more easy to bear. Because no, that's not true. It is true. No, that's our opinion. I think it also though opens the eye, like kind of Mike said. Tell me, tell me, a, tell me situation. a problem that music solved. I mean, hip hop came along. Did it solve the problem of pr police brutality? No, but it put it, put <laughs> okay. it, it put it on it put it on, um, on the map. spectrum, yeah, the map. Spectrum. Yeah, it did, yeah. but it didn't solve it. Maybe, maybe not. Okay, but it's out so there. that's what I'm saying. It doesn't really change know, the world. We know, we know the it system makes it, it makes we it. We know now. Even the idiot knows now the system doesn't work. Right. Okay. But that's not all because of music. I mean, I, I would think actually politicians... What is your pers um, perspective of the world? <laughs> well, that's a rather broad question. Could you specify? And what do you what do you believe in this world? What do you think? You believe in Jesus? You believe in Prophet Muhammad? Well, I definitely believe don't believe in Jesus. Okay, that's cool. Do you, why, why not? I, why not? I'm just curious. I think stuff. the better, better question is why? Why would I? <laughs> because I'm not 10. Okay, because I mean it's obviously an ancient myth, and you know even the Jesus story, his biography, is is completely unoriginal. You know all the gods that came before him had like the same birthday and the same that, story though as well. Same story, 
The same, yes, disciples, like 12 people, uh, many of them were crucified. The Samaritans had the same, of, the same Jesus. The same yeah, they Samaria. took the st stories that were going around the Mediterranean at the, at the time, and they grafted it onto the life of Jesus. I mean, the reason why his birthday is December 25th is because that was... The shortest day of the, of the year, you were telling me something? Yes, like right. Because that was the day that the sun started to, uh, when days started to get longer again, so that the people in the pagan times uh, celebrated that day because it meant that we we're going to live again because the days kept getting shorter and shorter and shorter in the winter. And, and why like, Jesus so embedded in our brain? <laughs> we're going to die. The days are going to get shorter until there's nothing. This is what I want to know. Why is Jesus so embedded in so many people's brains? Even people that are Buddhists and all that. Well, I'll doing? tell you. Um, I mean, there's some very interesting uh, scholarship done on this. There were lots of religions at the time. Of course, there are many that preceded Christianity. Absolutely. The reason why that one caught on is because, partly is because they grafted these familiar elements onto it, like his birthday uh, and stuff like that, and he's coming back to life. That was an old story. But part of it that was revolutionary was his message that when it really gets good for you is in the afterlife. Now, we're talking about a Roman Empire that was at least half slave, you know? It's not more. I mean, people think slavery was an American invention. It was not. No. Everybody in the Bible had them. The word slave comes from Slav, and there's nobody whiter in the world than Slavs. That slavery has been around since the beginning of time. Yeah, and, most, and mostly it wasn't even a racial thing simply because people weren't living in an area where there were people of other races. It's just human nature, brutal human nature, to make other people your slave if you possibly can. Now, we have come a long way since that time, but in the Bible, nobody even thought to condemn it. There's lots of rules about slavery in the Bible. None of them are, don't do it. They never even thought to say that. Like, don't do it. God's perfectly okay with it. His boy Jesus is perfectly okay with it. They have rules like, if a man kills your slave, you may kill his slave. Oh, okay. That sounds like a good little rule. But nobody ever said, maybe we shouldn't do this. Maybe we should put that well, in the I don't, ten. Well, I maybe we should know. put that in the tank. I, I never read the Bible, so I don't um, know. Well, I have. You didn't dig it, what you were reading? Well, as a historical document, it's interesting, and it's certainly fundamental to understanding our civilization. So I took it as scholarship when I was in college. But do I believe it? Of course not. It was written by people in the Bronze Age who didn't know what a germ or an atom was. It's a bunch of nonsense, and it's and it's wicked also. It's full of uh, ethnic cleansing, slavery. Again, just the fact that slavery is not condemned. They have a list of 10 things you sh absolutely should not do, but slavery and rape are not on the list. This is um, How ridiculous the Bible you're is talking that? about? The Bible, Bible, yes, the Bible. It's actually quite ironic because the Bible, I think, is like the most sold book. But isn't there so many? Uh, I don't know. I don't, I don't want to see nothing. Most, about the, the most like bar, bar, book anywhere. Well, yes, it's the Bible. I mean, most people, uh, less and less as time goes on, thanks partly to me, are, <laughs> are less and less religious, but. I mean, it's still mostly a religious country. Mostly people will say they believe in something. Now, shout out to the, my millennial friends. They're the first generation to be less than 50%, I think, who have a religious aff affiliation. The younger generations more and more are saying, this is a bunch of bullshit. We don't need this to live a good life. And then they see how like immoral so many religious people are. So they're like, why would I want to get involved in this club? It's hypocritical, it's not real, and it doesn't speak to me. I used to believe religion is your conscience. You know what's good and what's bad. Yeah, you know what's well, that's, wrong, that's what's right. That's your conscience. That's not religion. Yeah. Religion is something different. I mean, if that, I that mean, could be. Your, religion? Well, religion is a system. Religion is a is a formalized way of thinking with rules and laws and beliefs in things that are. And then are, again, we all have our own private religion then. But that's not really religious. religious. That's having better we have, no, it's every, no, we don't have to say, I'm just talking about the way we get up every morning, we wash our face, we brush our teeth, we. Well, that's a. Pan, and that's we not, live our, yeah, that's, that's like not a religion. religion, that's a regimen. Yes, we religion all. Religion is regimental. It mm. is. Well, yeah, it is. religion yeah, is regimental, yeah, but, no doubt. Okay, well, we're arguing over semantics here, but... No, I'm not arguing with you. No, no, I'm just saying, I think what defines something as a religion is is something that you're not describing. You're, you're describing 
what you believe and how you live your life. You don't need religion. Well, religion, Although, but religion you, tells you how to live your life and but what you're, you believe But aren't in. you Muslim? Yes. Oh, cool. That, that is a religion. Yeah, it's a very difficult religion, too. But listen, that don't mean um, you can't be a Muslim and live your religion and still think that somebody should be treated like a human being and not just be dictated by religion. Yeah. I would just say you're lucky that you're a Muslim in America. Because if you were a Muslim in most majority... Hey, you know, how, but listen, man, you keep saying that. I told you, you know how many Muslims in these countries think like us and just can't get over the oppression? Right, exactly. Right, so don't say if I went over, no, everybody would understand me. No, but I'm more saying... More than I understand myself. You couldn't live, and, and definitely your daughters and your wife couldn't live the way they do in America. Exactly. If they, okay, good. That's why they, Glad that's we why agree it, on that. That's why it was meant for them to live here. Okay, yes, yes, right. Our next partner has a product I use literally every day. I started taking AG1 because I hated taking pills and vitamins and wanted a supplement that actually tastes great. It doesn't taste fucking super healthy or anything, but it's got a mild feeling when it goes down. I look forward to taking it every morning. It has really a tropical taste. So what's this stuff? With one delicious scoop of AG1, you're absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole foods, sourced superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to help you start your day right. This special blend of ingredients supports your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy, recovery, focus, and aging. What do you think about that? I think it's lifestyle friendly and something I would like to participate in and people who I love to participate with me, yeah. No matter if you eat vegan, paleo, dairy-free, gluten-free. It costs less than $3 a day. You're investing in your health and it's cheaper than your cold brew habit. Oh, that's some cold shit. You know, usually, Every time I wake up, I got to take like six pills, right? And by the end of the week or by the end of two weeks, I got to go restock on them. Like, they get really expensive. How do you feel about that? Well, it sounds like AG1 is a great alternative for you, though. Oh, you're right. You're right. For every purchase, we donate to the organization helping to get nutritional food to kids in need, including No Kid Hungry Hand in the U.S. Right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. It's just one scoop in a cup of water every day. That's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. To make it easy, Athletic Green is going to give you a free year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free traveling packs, too. With your first purchase, all you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash hotboxing. Again, that's athleticgreens.com slash hotboxing to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. My kids, I, I believe that kids, our, our brain evolved. My kids are a lot smarter than me. I didn't go, I was a special ed kid. My kids are Ivy Leagues and stuff. So I think people uh, evolve. They don't have to, they don't have to have a sport where they have to get hurt or something to feed their family. Well, humans definitely evolve as individuals. Hopefully we evolve as we get older. I mean, we get smarter, we have more experiences, we become more mature, definitely men are very immature when we're young, you know, I mean, women. We, we never stop being boys. That's when I learned I'm, I'm what, I'm 50, 56, I, we never stop being boys. We may dress I, different. I, I, I can't may, speak for everybody. We may, we may dress different, but we never stop having that mentality of young and freedom. I, well, I can't speak for every man or boy. I, <laughs> in my life, have tried very hard to uh, maintain my as much of my boyhood as I can without the toxic part, you know. I mean, w without the stupid part. Mm -hmm. But you know, I, for example, having never gotten married, I think is the best way. I think you're a fucking genius. I <laughs> yeah. Is that, so the truth. <laughs> hey, I don't. I, I don't think, think so man, too, listen, Mike. <laughs> listen, I, I, I'm, I'm, I, you're a genius in that particular field. It's not. It, you know, I love my wife. Died for a kill for me, but right. you're a genius in I, that particular <laughs> field. Yeah, yeah. Let's talk about that. Do you it's, believe it's in? It's not easy. Do you believe in not getting married, or what's the whole? Well, I'm 66 that? and I've never done it, so I think that the evidence. You know, is yeah, you never got. Close, close. Oh, I've gotten close. I've, it's not easy to keep your toe out of the trap. <laughs> it, it really. Are you married? I, I'm. I'm engaged. Engaged. Yeah, I'm 27. I'm young. Okay, but I mean, a lot of uh, athletes I notice they get married early. 
Like when you see, and they have kids. No, right? listen, listen. Athletes no, love to have lots of kids. Just I think it's a macho this thing. Is, no, it's not macho. It's like, I, mean, I put my no, dick in a lady no. and I can prove it. Well, I mean, honestly, I don't have any kids at all. So I don't, I don't, okay. I, don't oh. I, I think. I but I mean, I've seen lots of, uh. of athletes. They just see, I just feel like it's a macho thing. No, it isn't. They, they equate it to love. Yeah, I think they equate it to love. I don't think they equate sex to love. I think they equate it to, you know what? I'm rich. I got all this money no, coming no, in. No, 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 no. no. I'm, I know the process. No. Of, they, okay. they, they, I have to the, disagree with you on great, that. The brother. greatest athletes in the world have the lowest self esteem. Lowest self esteem? Yeah. But I'm curious to hear your point, though. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'm like, curious to hear the macho Like when thing. I watch uh, that show, uh, Hard Knocks. Yeah. Training camp with mm -hmm. the whoever. Yeah. Like, you know, and they show their personal lives. Like, I think last year they did the Raiders. And mm -hmm. the, who's the quarterback on the Raiders? Um, oh, Derek Carr? Derek Carr. Christian, yeah. He was like, you know, like, he's like 24. He's got six kids. <laughs> I mean, he's just... Is he married? Look, is he married? Yes, yeah, he's, he's married. married yeah. But I'm he just saying, have 600 it's like... kids if he's married. I, I he just say, it life. looks... They just seem to have a lot of kids. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lie to you. They just seem to have a lot of kids I want at a very kids. young age. Right. Before I had one kid, I know I was going to have a lot of kids. Right. Once I get married, I want four kids. But again, it's something you can't really do if you can't afford it, although people do sometimes. But yeah, it's um, a lot easier if you got money coming in. It's like, hey, you know, I some people, have a lot of some kids. People, it's, it's just, some people just can't help it. Because I'm poor, that means I can't <laughs> fuck you and have babies. I'm going to tell you this, I though. can't pay for it. <laughs> I mean, the way I look at it, the reason why I want to have four kids with my wife once we get married is because I lo or my future wife is because I love her, right? You know, it's nothing, and I want to have a big family with her. I want to, you know, share that experience with her. And I feel like Mike said what Mike just said. You know, it, it equates to love. So um, yes, of course. I'm not I'll, saying that that's not part of it, obviously, and it no, depends no, on the no, individual. No, no, it's different. No, no this this way it comes a different because it's their perception of love. Right. It doesn't necessarily have to be and love, that's but it's different for everybody. Love, right. Yeah. And sometimes love is um, is brutal. They believe if you don't if you don't brutalize me, you don't love me. Everybody have a different perspective. That's and a different yeah, kind of that's experience. That's a sad love. part of it. But, and then some people, lots of people, I would say most people like children. I never liked children. I oh, I love. So that's another reason why I, I didn't like them. W. C. Fields. This W. C. W. C. Fields. My mommy hated. Yes, lots of people do actually. Uh, I found that out over the years because I've often talked honestly about uh, I have no need or use for children, mm -hmm. and lots of people have come up to me and said, "Oh, I'm so glad you talk about that. I feel the same way." Mm -hmm. It's not like it was 30, 40, 50 years ago when everyone had to like pretend they liked children, even if they didn't, or mm -hmm. else you were some sort of monster. People are now very free, and millions of them do, to say no. I, I'm not into children. I don't want children. Sometimes they want companionship with another person. A lot of people don't even want that. I mean, the majority of people in America are, are single, I think. Uh, that's, a, that's a big sea well, change. Well, you know, um, I can go into deep with that. A lot of people can't live with themselves. So how do they live with someone else? Hmm. Well, some people can't wake up alone. I think is the problem. I'm, I used to be one of those guys. You can't wake up alone. No, I can't wake up, period, and I'm always up. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean I, you can't uh, wake up, period? I mean, um, I'm you, always up. I you don't sleep. sleep well? No, I don't sleep well, but I still feel great in the morning. I mean, I'm, really? I'm sick. If something's wrong. Sleep apnea? Well, if you huh? feel great, you're not no, sick. I don't call, no, it can't be sleep. It's just that it's 24 hours. No drugs. But you, uh, Mike, you sleep. You just, uh, you're not no, aware I'm not because you're asleep. three asleep. hours, four hours. Only three or four hours? Yeah. That is going to catch up to you. You, your brain needs sleep. I'm not, how, well, listen, how are you going to sleep when you're out there trying to conquer the world? What are you trying to conquer? Myself. Oh, so what are you doing with all these 20 hours a day that you're up? <sighs> Whatever I want, jerking off, anything. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm glad the time is not fucking, wasted. You know, nothing conflicts in my life because it's no. my world. Everything that everything that exists is my I would my think world. jerking off would then sap the desire for the... Uh, That's the thing. No. The desire for it, lust, yeah. The lust. Lust, no. And it doesn't no, go no. away when you jerk off. I, I like to, <laughs> I guess I'm a little different. I like to save my chi, you know. Yeah. Uh, if I know I'm going to be seeing someone when sex is in the offing, you know, it's like I'm not going to jerk off that day. Really? Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. But, you know, I'm not uh, Iron Mike. That's interesting. Uh, you know, I... Yeah. Amazing. Well, everyone's, you know, got, everyone's got their own methods. I mean, fuck. Right. It also has to do with age. I think when I was 27, yeah, I'd be more likely to, to jerk, jerk off, off and then, then you know, go uh, some now it's like you know, I want to, <laughs> <laughs> I want to save it.
<laughs> because I'm a considerate lover. That's <laughs> what I am. Because I'm considerate, and I'm just like, oh, you know, I don't want to get into bed. And she's got, well, you got sploosh all over you already. I'm like, honey, I just whacked, and now you're here. Great. That's how I live you know, my life. No room, Dick. No room. You, you, you just ring me up. You keep me, wind me Whoa. up, and let me go. Okay. Go all day. Well, I mean, I'm glad. Been that way since I was a little kid. Never sleep. I'm so glad you found happiness. That's why I never with get your wife he, and your hand. Yeah, yes. My wife and my hand is successful. <laughs> Look, I've been married 13 years today. 13 years a day May from my hand. Because of the hand and the. Righty. May I have your hand in marriage? Righty or left? My hand. I I, I, I'm ambidextrous. <laughs> No. <laughs> I'm sorry. You are with jerking off. It's, That's very it's, rare. It's hard. It's just hard. <laughs> it, it is. Larry David did a whole bit on it once on really? Curb Your Enthusiasm, and it, and it was very. I relate. I think every man related to it. You can't do it lefty. I mean, no, because I had a cast lefty. in my right hand before. Oh, uh, right. So you had to learn. Yeah. And what right. about in prison? Did you jerk off there? Oh, listen. I had. People send me pictures that's unjerkable to think about. You know? Unjerkable? Just, what do yeah, you mean? Yeah, it's just a stunning beauty. Oh, I was very, um, I had a girlfriend in jail to my teacher. Wait, you had a girlfriend in jail? Yeah, my, my um, GED teacher. Well, what do you mean in jail? How could there be a woman in jail? Because people, it's prison, and people go to school there trying to get GED to get time oh. cut. So you would have sex with the teacher in the prison? <sighs> It's okay. Yes, it's been it years. Yeah, yeah. No, no. Anyone knows this oh, public okay. knowledge. He's, uh, he's living uh, through you right now, Mike. <laughs> and don't yeah, that's ahead. what I really want to do is have sex with a woman <laughs> in a prison. A prison. That's, that's, that's right. A GED teacher. That's my, my biggest fantasy. Right now, that my my only get, do the details, only get sent to prison <laughs> and have prison sex I know. with a GED I know, teacher. The thrill. But you're saying she was a hot number. No, no, she was not hot at all. Oh, this fantasy is getting even better. Oh, not oh. At all. Not at all. But it was, but any port in a storm is what you're saying. No, you, but, um, you were in, in prison. In that particular time in my life, she looked like Marilyn Monroe. Right, exactly. Well, I never thought Marilyn Monroe was attractive. Well, I wouldn't know what she was. But I, I, about I, you I she take your here. point. Yeah. Not my type, Marilyn I like Monroe. Marilyn Monroe. Okay. You do? You like Marilyn Monroe? I don't want to fuck Marilyn Monroe, but Marilyn Monroe's a beautiful looking lady. I think she's. I understand really why nice. they thought she was sexy. I, she just was never my type. She was like sort of plump and pasty and stupid. Plump as in like thicker? Like, yes. I know so that's, once you I see know that's someone, in style now. Yeah. And it was in style way back then. Yeah. But she's before my time. Yeah. And I, I just, I just, she's just not my type. So, you're, just, so you like the, like the two, early 2000s models. I am very much up. against what has happened in America with people like uh, glorifying gluttony and being obese and uh, you know you go into a strip club now not that I do I guess maybe it's when I grew up it mm -hmm. was more the 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 you know, like sort of the yeah, skinny, like uh, like hard body. They yeah. used to call it. I need meat. Like, well, like, well, like I can't do like, um, fit, that. Like fit, or, fit, fit, very fit, very fit, abs. Yes. Conservative. Exact. Conservative. No. Yeah, like, what do you mean conservative? Like, like you know, like not, <laughs> I don't care about her politics. No, no, no. Just no. as long as she's got ass. No, I mean, I mean, conservative in the fact that like she wasn't like Marilyn Monroe, like being promiscuous, right? Well, or, I mean, that's you're not, a, we're talking uh, about two different things. Bad, we're talking about the physical part, and now, and you're, now you're talking about a different part. About a different I'm part, just yeah. saying Marilyn Monroe always struck me as a dunce. She looked like a ditzy broad, like a fucking idiot. And of course, everybody who ever worked with her said that was the case. Hmm. You had to do like eight takes to get one line out of her. But like, oh, here I am. Cut, Marilyn, that's great. We'll pick up the rest of that sentence after lunch. Mm. You know, I mean, that just- How do you feel about mercy on people? Mercy? Yeah. What do you mean mercy? I, I'm pro mercy, uh, you know, in, in, its, <laughs> in, its, in its appropriate moments. Uh, yeah. I mean, you know, if, if someone like uh, attacked me with a fucking weed whacker, I, I don't know if I'd want to have complete mercy on them. I mean, what do you mean mercy? I don't know. Do you, um, everybody appears just like that's that they are their problem. She's more than a dense bitch, I think, right? Yes. Well, <laughs> I mean, she, had, she, she could be a, done, but she's look, more Mike, than she that. was a candle in the wind. What can I say? She apparently was very abused uh, all through her life. I feel bad for her. Well, not anymore. She's dead, and there's no religion. But um, you know, she she was apparently you know passed around by the people in the studio system at the time because that's that made, how they did it. That with made her move. It was, from that, that made her less of a human being, perhaps you think. 
What's that? You think that probably made her less of a human being? I didn't say less. Of, I never said no, less but, of a uh, human no, being. No, but you, when you speak of us, you speak of her as if she doesn't deserve anything. I she didn't does. ever no, say that. Listen. You're putting words in my no, mouth I, that are not my words. You, no, what did you I hear said she's now? a dunce, that I'm not attracted to her. It doesn't, how do you get from there to, I don't think she's a worthy human no, being? No, you say she got pissed You're, around and all this She stuff. did get passed around. That's I not on know. her. That was the way things were back then. Yes, I was being sympathetic to her. She had a tough childhood. She was, I think, in, a, in you know, foster homes and stuff. And then she goes to Hollywood. They all mistreat her and use her. The Kennedys, she was fucking the, the president and then passed on to the brother. How do you know? Were you there? How do you know it's you're all, saying this? This is all documented. This is all documented. documented. Thank you, that is documented. This is all How do you know? You can read about it. You can read about it. Yeah. The motherfucker writes something down. That don't mean it's true. They no, had enemies it too. Is, <laughs> no, we, I, we're pretty darn sure yeah. that she was uh, fucked by both Jack and Bobby Kennedy. Does which, that make them bad or her bad? It makes them bad. I don't think they're bad either. If they well, both hit. The, I mean, me and my brother both hit this girl, and, and she's just not married a girl that wants to hit both of us. Why are we bad guys? No, I, Mike, I think because the issue it, is that he's the president of the United States. Now, look, hey, listen, and, don't start that shit now because we're going to talk about presidents now. Okay. Do you but, think their dicks don't get hot? Come on, yes. I'm just saying. Oh, okay. you know, I don't oh. think the present one is having a. <laughs> I mean, he's 80. I don't know. I don't know. Hey, how you'd hard. be surprised. The I don't know if he's today. jerking off and then having sex with the wife. <laughs> hey, listen, I'm, um, I'm guessing that he. <laughs> if he is, he's a fucking warrior. Right, he is. <laughs> a, well, but, yeah. You're saving too much, man. I mean, you're he's coming. Too much. The dust is coming out of the end of his dick. But, oh, man. But, <laughs> but look, Marilyn Monroe, yes. Candle in the wind. Look, I'm I'm just the young man in the 22nd row. As Caesar is something more than sexual, Mike. Uh, but the Kennedys did pass her around, and that is, you know, it is on Fractual them. That, I don't think that's it's a very track. moral thing well, to do. I, she I, was I a fragile know. person, and they kind of took advantage of her. And some people think, I mean, I don't think they did this, but it's out there. People do think they also killed her. I don't think they did that. What? Oh, it's not completely that. impossible. Rich, powerful they people. They give these people more credit. Rich, I powerful think they give people. The Kennedys do more credit than they, 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 they do. They do awful things. Yeah. Yeah. You know, dirty dogs do dirty things. Yeah. You know, and when you have that kind of power, nothing is impossible. She was a loose cannon. They were worried, but she would talk and maybe bring the presidency down and start scandals. And who knows, Marilyn? She's crazy. She was always on pills. She was depressed. Is it possible that they had the situation taken care of? Yes, I, I refuse to believe that because I think the Kennedys are better than that. Definitely. But they're certainly not angels, the Kennedys. Well, none of us saw, but I mean, I'm, listen, I'm, they had enemies too. One of them drove a girl into a river and then didn't report it for 10 hours and, like, you know, picked up his dry cleaning on the I way don't to know. the police. Listen, imagine that happened to one of us. Man, you think we're gonna? No, really, think about it. If I drove a girl into a river, I would address no, that issue first. No, no, first. right away. Really? I would not like. I don't know. Uh, I would just like to. See I would not like no. my to do list. And, would you oh, say like? Fuck, you wouldn't right, think. You wouldn't them. think one minute. Oh my God, what am I gonna do? My life is ruined. You wouldn't think one minute. Didn't she date uh, JFK's brother to get back at him? God, who are you talking who about now? Who, who are you about? talking no, about? No, no. How that's do you know? That's what we're talking about. Young guys yeah. are all... No, but, is it, but, but you said that you passed around, but isn't, fucking... that, isn't that part of it? Part of I what? don't believe of it. Of her little, like, shenanigans? That's why they probably might have gotten her killed? Well, I... I look, she was trying to get back at him, date her brother. I just know, bro, I just know and, as being entertained, I know I, people from, fucking lie to you all the time. Make well, yes, look. we don't know these things for sure. We don't know anything for sure. We could be in the Matrix right now. Mm. But what I heard was... I mean, what the story was is that she actually fell more for Bobby Kennedy. That, I and mean, you think Jack, Jack was, got jealous? I don't think Jack was jealous. I don't think he loved Marilyn Monroe. I think he had sex with her. The stories about Jack Kennedy was that he was not a great lover, that it was over rather quickly. Minimum. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> right, and that she was much more into Bobby Kennedy. I don't know. I Did mean, Bobby maybe, last longer. Uh, <laughs> No, these things Bobby we don't Lassel know. Kennedy. But that it certainly would uh, inform uh, a woman's uh, affection for someone, perhaps, that one man was, you know, quick. Uh, you know, Bob, I mean, Jack had a bad back, maybe. I think it's all conspiracy. <laughs> he had a bad all back. All conspiracy like, from the enemy. Marilyn, I'd, uh, I'd love to be in you more, but uh, damn, uh, the Cuban <laughs> Missile Crisis is uh, <laughs> getting me, uh, my back all <laughs> tense. And uh, Bobby, come in here and uh, finish Marilyn off. 
That's I what happened. Think, Mike. There's, there's a re, there's a Rick there's a think, reenactment I of think, the Kennedy Marilyn Monroe saga. My opinion. I think everybody was jealous of the Kennedys than they were back then. Yes. Well, the jealous. Kennedys. Look, I'm a. I grew up in a house, Mike, where you never said a bad word about the Kennedys. I come from my father, Irish Catholic. Okay, lived in an era where an Irish person, a Catholic person, couldn't become president. That's the way it was. In when my father was born in 1921, there was no, it was not even on the horizon that a, a Catholic could be president. So when Kennedy actually achieved that, and it was like in its day what Obama was in 2008, mm -hmm. it was a big, wow, a Catholic president? He was thrilled. He loved the Kennedys. They were his, and they were there his politics, what he did for civil rights. I remember my father telling me when I was too young to really understand it, mm -hmm. why he loved Kennedy and why he thought Kennedy was a great guy, what he did for civil rights and all that kind of stuff. Most, most kids did not have the benefit of a white father in a white suburban town telling them what was the right thing about civil rights. But it was a lot of it was the Kennedys because John Kennedy did make a fundamental change in American politics. Before him, the South was known as the Solid South. Solid Democratic South, in other words. The South voted for the Democrats because Lincoln was a Republican and he obviously, obviously prosecuted the Civil War. They hated Republicans. John F. Kennedy sent troops into the South so that the black kids could go to school. And then the Obviously, the white Southern racists hated the Democrats after that. That part of the country completely switched from being solidly Democrat yeah. to solidly Republican because of the Kennedys. That was the biggest sacrifice anyone has ever made in political history. He did the right thing, I and he lost from, a I whole part of the country. Where Kennedys were, like you said, they're cool, the best. Yeah. I, I came from that Oh, world. and they were cool. Yeah. I mean, he was definitely cool. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. You know, compared to the squares in the Republican <laughs> Party, I mean, Bush or Reagan, Marilyn Monroe would not have wanted to fuck Reagan or Bush <laughs> or Mitt Romney. I mean, can you see Marilyn Monroe with Mitt Romney? I just, I just don't. No, no. I mean, she'd she'd be drinking a caffeinated beverage and he'd leave the room. What are your thoughts on gun control? Well, stuff? you know, today is my big writing day for my show. My show airs Friday. We tape it Friday. Um, but we write the end of the show, what we call the editorial today. So um, I was just reading what I'm going to be doing. I mean, part of what I'm going to be doing. This is the beginning of the process today. Friday, we're going to be talking about, or I'm going to be talking about at the end of the show, the connection between Hollywood and gun violence. Mm -hmm. I don't think anyone is talking about that enough. I think it's very ironic that Hollywood is the wokest place in the world. I mean, you can't do a movie where you have people smoking. But somehow they have this giant blind spot about gun violence. I mean, every action movie is a guy just mowing people down. Guns, 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 guns. They love fucking guns and shooting people, and they love revenge stories. Mm -hmm. And if you think that this is not part of the mix, now I'm saying part of the mix. Obviously, it's because guns are probably too available in this country. Mm -hmm. It's because we just have too many broken people mm -hmm. who are miserable and unhappy. I want but my girls also, to have guns. I want my children to be able to know how to shoot guns. And yes, themselves. I have guns too. Uh, I don't. You know, we live in a in a violent world, and you cannot. It's not their fault, but you cannot depend on the police mm -hmm. to always be there. And you know, when things happen in your home, the police can't be there. You have to protect yourself. You have well, to be you, able you, to listen, protect yourself. You can yourself. protect yourself and somebody breaking your house and still go to jail. Yes, in in uh, California, I think. Yes. Yeah. Where are we you, at? You, you Where better, are we? Where you, are we? If if you if you're gonna shoot someone <laughs> who is in your house to kill you and you rape you, your wife and you kill your kids, right? You better shoot them in the at, front. Yeah. yeah. On the leg or something. Don't shoot. Well, you can shoot them as long as they're facing you. No. Don't shoot them <laughs> no. on the lawn. No, not like, the lawn. Either. Wait till they're actually in your bedroom. You better do it just right. It's really scary. It's shit. very, very scary and ridiculous. When I heard about that, I said, "Get the fire!" <laughs> if, if 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 you hit him in the back of the head, Mike, you're gonna do life sentence. But I mean, it's it's a mix of things yeah. that makes this such a difficult problem to solve. 
Um, and and, and it, I mean, guns is part of it, but get real. It's only part of it. And this obsession. What about people? What about ob- people in the course. Guns. And, and this obsession they have with getting rid of certain guns. Look, yeah. I don't care if they get rid of the AR-15s. Knock yourself out. Mm-hmm. But if you think that's going to change the problem, I mean, this kid in Texas was locked in the school for over an hour. You think he needed a rapid fire gun to kill 19 people in an hour? Any gun would have worked. Yeah. And most of the mass shootings we have are not with automatic, semi-automatic weapons. Did you ever run for any kind of office? Oh, fuck no. No? Oh, are you kidding? No, but listen, you have such a great... Um... Oh, I'd be great at the job. Yeah. I just wouldn't <laughs> run for it. You just have to get run for it. But they're not going to elect an atheist unmarried pot smoker to high office, and I don't want to do it. I'd have to get up in the morning. I'd have to, you know, probably, like, get married. Well, I don't believe that. It would just, <laughs> it'd just be a nightmare. Um, be a nightmare so, so, you know, their loss, because I could be a fucking great leader. I think I, so. Yeah, I, I, I mean, but people do not like honesty, Mike. I mean, the Ooh, word politician. Listen, this is what I learned a long time ago. The truth will set you free, but first it'll make you miserable. Well, <laughs> people like to miserable? people like to say they like the truth. Mm-hmm. They like the truth as a concept. When you get specific, and it's on their side, especially if, right, especially right. about things that no, affect them. They don't like no or truth. Make the, yes, that. then then you then shit. you're the bad guy. But the, for the people who do like the truth, I mean, it's one reason why our show has been on for twenty years, and my other show nine years before that, Mm -hmm. and why our numbers have always been higher than the other shows. Mm -hmm. Ah, He had a better show than you. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Well, definitely better. Um, But also, like, uh, for most, compared to most of those, more popular. They don't report that because, you know, the usual suspects hate me. But, um, (laughs) wow, when you go for a... (laughs) Blueberry, <laughs> you really, you like those blueberries. Oh, tremendously. Yeah, those are very good for you, right? Tell me about it. Antioxidant. Yeah, right. What does the antioxidant do? It helps with inflammation. No, okay. antioxidant. That's what he said. Oxygen. Not an antioxidant. I said oxidant. He oh, said okay. oxygen. Yes. No, I said oh. antioxidant. Oh. No, we want. I did not say oxygen. <laughs> <laughs> it's a circle of who said what. <laughs> it's run that shit back. <laughs> no, it's pretty interesting. It's pretty interesting, um, your viewpoints on that. And also, do you think the fact that we kind of are giving it more attention is motivating more people to go and do those those heinous things? There's never a doubt that a lot of these are now copycat killers. Yeah. Um, They see it on TV. Mm -hmm. uh, And yes, it reminds them, oh, that's on my to-do list. I don't know. I think people don't have hope for a better life. I'm just... That's that is definitely a big part of it. No, I was and one social of those kids. Me- and social media is a big part of it. Well, I didn't live during that period. No, no, but I'm saying that these mass shootings have gone up in the age of social media. Saying, yeah. It's a lot of it is the phones. Kids are on their phones. Uh, those phones are evil. They they bully people over the phone. I mean, I remember going to school and being bullied, but it ended when I got home. <laughs> if that phone is in your pocket, it it never ends. That's why there's so much suicide with teenagers today. To bring it back to the point I was making about Hollywood and the movies we make and how many movies are not just you, g- showing that a gun is the solution to your problems, but every story is a revenge story. Yeah. The world has treated me wrong. So I'm going to make my so, Right. Yeah. So I'm going to get mine. So I'm going to go out there and I'm going to make it right. Now, of course, in the movies, usually they set it up so the reason why the guy has to kill 463 listen, no, people. Listen. Let me finish. Yes, please. But the reason why he has to kill 463 people is because, you know, they killed his wife or they killed his daughter or they killed somebody. So, you know, in the movies, it's we not feel the real like... world, though. In the movies, we feel like that's justified, why the, why the killer is doing this, why the hero is doing this. But to a kid who's 17 or something. He can't process that. Exactly. Can't He's looking at this. All he knows, I just watched this movie called The Northman. Have you heard oh, of it? Oh, I love that one. I heard one, amazing uh, reviews about it. I want to see it. A next flick, right? Is it Netflix? No, it's, uh, no, it's not. It was in theaters. Oh, I, I saw it on it's Netflix. It's not on Netflix. I, it is no, not on I, Netflix. I, I, well, I saw the Northman different. It's on, I saw it on Netflix. Vudu. 
which is was the, it pretty good? Yeah, it's, it's pretty good. But pretty good. Uh, but here's the here's the story in the Northmen. Okay, it's of course it's medieval times. Yeah, He's Vikings. a Viking. Okay, so we're not talking about AR-15s. But doesn't matter to a kid. That's not the point. He sees in the movie. I'm not spoiler alert. So if you're thinking about watching the Northmen, but I'm not going to ruin it. Well, I guess I am, but it's so obvious it doesn't ruin it. I'm still going to watch it. Of course. So as a kid, movies. he sees a guy. It happens to be his uncle, mm -hmm. doesn't matter, kill his father. Mm -hmm. As a kid, he sees that, runs away. For the rest of the 137 minutes of this movie, the Northman just has really one thing on his mind. His uncle. Of course, <laughs> he's going to kill the guy. There's no humor, he never smiles, he has no other interests, maybe a little raping, maybe a little pillaging, not raping, but pillaging, he is a Viking. That's what Vikings did. Pillaging back and, back, yeah. and raiding, but mostly it's, I'm going to kill kill the motherfucker who killed my father. And most of the school shooters, I think 75% are grow up in a family without a father, okay? So no, did this kid in Uvalde, Texas see a Viking kill his father? No, but he grew up in a home without a father. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's the same sort of scenario in his mind. The world has made me hurt and now I'm gonna make everybody else hurt. That, I think, is the, the problem we have when you see so many movies where someone is, some person is just taking revenge on the life that they don't like that they have. And that's not what I believe. I believe they're programmed to do it. Somebody programmed them Programmed? To do it. Someone programmed, a mentor programmed them to do that. And what, do you say, what does that mean, yeah, programmed? What do you mean, programmed? Like internet, like movies? No. Or like, listen, any organization, when I'm, when I'm a white guy, I'm only going to shoot a black, um, Supermarket up. Oh, okay, yeah. but that okay. Yes, that was a racist crime. Yes, that was a racist. But crime. Uvalde, Texas, was not a racist crime. It was Latino kid killing Latino kids. So it's not about that all the time. No, it's, about it's not about that mostly. People. Columbine was not racist. It was white kids killing white kids. It's not about that. No, we talk about now. Listen, do we always have, do we got to talk about what's going on now? How black people just getting killed in the streets? Okay, but you, no, no, say, listen, you said listen. they're programmed. What does no, that mean? They're programmed to kill black people. Oh, they don't. They don't wake up. Does he wake up in the morning and say, "I'm gonna go"? The ball, take me ball, through. Take, take me through what you. programming is. Organization. We don't like niggas. Okay, your job is to kill as many niggas as you can before you leave here. So they they find a stoop. That's the way it lives. Now you don't believe that? I'm I'm saying you I'm, don't believe that. Well, let me answer. I think there is some of that that goes on in this country. I think way less than in years no, past. That's crazy. I, it only it only got it only became more. No, it did not. What become do you more. think? What do you it think? It did not become more. There is that Are you element. More afraid there now is that than you element. Were ten years in a, ago. What happened? Are you more afraid now than you are ten years ago about a cop killing you or something? Yeah. Well, well you shouldn't be. Well, are you? They they have statistics on this. On whose statistics? On what? And how I many, know what I see. I see black people in the street dead, and the people are marching on it. What statistic is that? That they killed another nigger for nothing? Yes, that. What's that statistic? A bunch of dead niggers that didn't do anything. Okay, cops also kill white people. Listen, Th that just never becomes a video. No, listen. Why not? So, why not? Because it's not it's not something that people are as interested in. I, that's because, hard to believe. No, well, why? The, well, the cops have um, cameras. You don't think in their kill phone? white cops? I mean, cops of all races kill white people as well? Well, listen, they don't kill like they kill black people. Correct. I mean, they have the numbers on this. Cops kill about 1,000 people a year. What? Whose number? You keep saying these numbers. The these are somebody, the, the FBI, your numbers. Did oh, you so you're saying that the shit? FBI yes. is... So you're saying the FBI is cooking the numbers? Oh, uh, well, listen, I'm not saying that. And there is some that. of that. I'm not saying that, but I'm what saying, they, why is it that we have to take everybody's word for, you know... For God's sake, that's not true. Why can't we, we do we our don't. own investigation? I don't take anybody's word. On well, you say Facebook. we have statistics from other people. Yeah, we do. Well, what I mean, the, well, what we have staff? to, we have to have staff? some way of objectively measuring things, other than just going by my feeling is. No, that's my feeling. It's fact. More black people get killed in this country than white people. There's more yes. racist towards black people than white yes, people. Yes, of course. More no, no, one's, no one's arguing yeah. with that. But we're talking, you said it's you worse than black, ever. It is worse than ever. Okay, well, I would argue with that. Uh, all right, so listen, when the last time you seen people just dead in the street? What, the 60s? It's always happened. Police it's always have happened always, to black people. But, yes, it's always happened. It's always more, happened to black or well, Latino again, people. You, 
All right. Well, you don't you don't want to go by what the FBI has calculated hey, listen, because you think they're in on it. Listen. Right. You tell me the history of the FBI, then we'll talk about it. What's the history of the FBI? Well, it was founded by a guy who wore a dress. All right, what about that? What about that? <laughs> I mean, it's a little odd. I don't when know, you how think did you of... know? You ever see him in a dress? No, did you but see the I, pictures? No, and I never saw Marilyn Monroe yes, fucking Jack Kennedy either. I mean, everybody said you know, it happened. I, I don't believe this we, fucking shit. You don't believe anything. It's, so, it's not. It's know. conspiracy shit, man. Okay, so back You're to, the conspiracy no, theorist, not conspiracy, me. No, I just don't believe that shit. It's just too mundane to believe. What's too mundane to believe? That J. Edgar Hoover was a cross-dresser? He was. J. Edgar Hoover was a cr what, dressed as a lady. I Listen, promise you. Anything. I don't know. Show me. Yes. Show and, me your and truth. He had a show boy, me your proof. He had a boyfriend. Who Clyde? Show Tolson. me your truth. Yes, but Clyde. Show me your truth, though. Show me. What, How do you can you truth? I, show me something. I, can, I need I to can. know truth. By I you. can't. I, Mike, you're right. You can't 100 percent be sure of anything. I cannot 100 percent tell you that uh, J. Edgar Hoover. Like you said, I didn't know. Put on Cleopatra was an ugly bitch, man. Oh, we're back to that. Yeah, you I remember that. <laughs> yeah, well, this she like, didn't believe well, this well, like a product of you know, incest, like, though. That's why she was so ugly. We really can can't. We she was like a product of incest. That's we like really she can't. can't Cleopatra. Yeah, yeah. Like she had, she, probably. Yeah. Well, all the Egypt. That probably we a lot know. Of the Egyptians were. That's something we do know. Yeah. That uh, the uh, Egyptian dynasty, they married their brothers and sisters together. Yes. For pure blood. Now, how we could possibly think we could know what she looked like from two. Thousand Genetic. years ago. Genetic. Now, well, they can do anything now from what I know, they say, but right? In real life. Well, again, Oof. they didn't have photography back then. So, uh, and now Gal Gadot is playing her. Again, I guess we're going to have a, a, another historical travesty here where. Uh, somebody attractive is playing this yeah, she's, ugly She's woman. very attractive. But she's very attractive. And we don't know what Cleopatra looked like. Well, they showed what she looked like. Man, why is it that you, you don't want to deal hysterical. with science? It's You believe that. Science. That to you is is just... A, <laughs> well, not that picture. Not no, that should, particular picture. No, we should pull up. Cleop that Cleopatra picture. looked like 2,000 years ago. You have no problem with. But Marilyn Monroe in the 60s, we don't know what happened here. The well, FBI, who the fuck knows what they're doing? <laughs> I mean, you know, we just don't know what Cleopatra Patrick look like. All I know is that she did wind up getting both Julius Caesar and Mark Antony, who were like the two big ballers of their day. So I think she must have had something going for her. I mean, other than Egypt and its grain. That desperation. <laughs> they were <laughs> after the grain, Mike. You might be right. They were after the grain. You know that. You're a history. I was always, I was very impressed by how your historical knowledge. We talked about uh, the, oh, you know what we never got to? When we were talking about Hermann the German, how he won the Battle of the Teutoburg Forest exactly. in 9 AD, and then the reason why uh, east of the Rhine they drink beer and west of the Rhine they drink wine is because after that battle, that's as far as the Romans ever got. They never got past that Rhine River. Never, ever, and since then. Right, because of, of that Romans. battle. Because that was where the Roman Empire was stopped. And so mm -hmm. Europe, from, from that day forward, really was divided into those two kinds of cultures. That a was Germanic, German. It was all German. After a all. Germanic culture and a Latin culture. And after. if they had not lost that battle, if they had kept going, who knows what it would have looked like today or what we would look like today. But it's good that yeah. Rome crushed. <laughs> the Germans worse than the Romans. No, um, Charlemagne and Tr Childrick and all those guys, they were worse than the Romans. Worse in what way? And how they tortured people. To see, if you're guilty or not, you gotta, you gotta, you have to, um, I'm gonna put this in a bucket of scalding hot water. This is what the Merovingians did. Boom, you go get it. If you're not, if your hand's not scorched, you're innocent. Well, I mean, no. but, okay, but the, I mean, again, this is human nature. And plus, they tell you apart too. They like to rip people apart. Yes, but they, but like, so did Genghis Khan, and and so did everybody in history. Do these? I mean, Vlad. That means it's cool. I mean, I'm not saying it's cool. Where? Why do you make these leaps? No, but you said everybody cool. did it. Everybody did, did do it. So that don't make it bad because this guy. Did, I didn't this say guy it doesn't make it bad. Ass, so it's cool because everybody I did it back then. I didn't say it doesn't make it bad. You said Charlemagne was worse than them. I'm saying they were all alike. Well, he killed a lot of people. Now. He killed a lot of people. So did everybody who was in charge of a population back then, before like 20 years ago. Well, 
Cyrus the Great then killed a lot of people. He liberated people. Cyrus the Great? Yeah, he liberated people. Cy the Persian? He was all about liberation. Oh, please. That's all he did I'm liberate. sure. I'm sure a few eggs were broken to make that omelet. Yeah, uh, yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. Okay, I the agree. Persian Empire was not built on kindness. No empire was. They had either different rings. The, they had different rings. The, ring. the Muslim Empire wasn't either. Oh, and, that was something. Yeah, what? That, that was a mess, the Muslim yes, Empire. Ma Muhammad dies in 632. By what, exactly a century later, 732 was the Battle of Tours, right? In the oh, Pyrenees. Oh, that's when. That's when they were stopped from getting. They were, they'd conquered. Charles Rome. Montel. Charles Montel, yes. Charles Montel. Right. Who was the grandfather of Charlemagne. Charlemagne. Right. But it took, of Pippin it of took one century for them to conquer almost the whole known world. You don't do that by handing out pamphlets. Okay, that was done on, by the sword. No, I'm a great respecter of the, the Merovingians. That's the French dynasty yeah. that started the, yeah. yes. And they, they're the ones that's supposed to continue to hide, um, what's that thing again? The covenant? Covenant? Yeah. Of what? You know the shit everybody's looking for, the cup of Jesus. Oh, of the, the chalice. Yeah. Yes, the holy chalice yeah, that Jesus yeah. drank out of, yes. Well, I mean, that's, that's Da Vinci Code stuff. Yeah, but the Merovingian is supposed to have that stuff. Oh, that's there. right. Yes. In Da Vinci Code, I think what they say at the end is that Jesus had a kid and he, started, and he started that dynasty. Yeah, and that kid was spoiled rotten, let me tell you. What are you <laughs> eating, <laughs> though? You look fucking great. You know, I just did a fast. Yeah? I just did a fast for five days, which is great. A fast is, uh, I would highly recommend it. Look, a young boy. I look... <laughs> 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 Thank you, Mike. One thing I the think. Day, I'm thin. a little scared, but uh, I look like a young boy, the kind well, that Charlemagne I mean. used to keep around. Uh, so, what were you saying? So let's talk about yes. continuing our yes. talks about what's going on in the United States. So transgenders cro and crossing sports, right? Yeah. How do you feel about that? And also, it's, so this is a two-part question, and you're along for the Pride segment. Well, I've always been a big supporter of gay rights, and, and I think it's wonderful that America got to a place where people can freely be who they really are. I mean, obviously, a certain number you of... You really think we're there yet? Well, we're always in the process, Mike. It's okay. always an evolution. And here's where you leap to saying, oh, Bill, why are you saying things are perfect? I'm not. I'm evolution. not saying that at well, all. That's what I was, I was saying. Evolution, these guys are smarter than us. Yes. Because of evolution. And you didn't agree that they were smarter than us. No, I don't think human. I don't think human beings' brains evolve over the course of two generations. Maybe over the course of two hundred. So we're generations. all smarter than Einstein, right? A Plato, a no. Socrates. Well, exactly. We're not smarter than Einstein. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think we're about. We probably have about the same brain power. Now, at some point in our evolutionary history, our brains did get bigger. I mean, that's why human beings are the biggest swinging dicks on the block. Because unlike uh, a gorilla, who, you know, obviously is way stronger than us, a gorilla could probably even, you know, take you, Mike. I agree, too. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But their brains, for some reason, a lot of... Uh, our brain, uh, the human brain, just got way bigger than the other species. And so we were able to obviously do things that other species have not been able to do. It didn't go to our bulk like in a gorilla, it went to our brain. That was a big change. But I don't think that's happened in the last 50 years. I don't think kids today are smarter. I mean, they're savvier about certain things like technology yeah. and social media. And they, they certainly are able to... Uh, smell advertising coming at them. They don't like it when you deliberately advertise, which is not good for us the way you and I read ads on these podcasts. <laughs> but <No way>. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, ed, I don't maybe. think they're actually <laughs> smarter. And I don't think that the phones are helping them at all because their attention span is is nil because they everything is scrolling quickly and going past. I think fast. phone became part of women's femininity and men's masculinity. Wait, say that again. The femininity of women. Yes. Got caught up in their phone and information, and the masculinity of men got caught up in our phones. What does that mean? Uh, our life is in our phone. The, what do you mean the femininity life, got yeah. caught up in the phone? It's just all of us. Um, our whole system of what we are get, got caught up in that. If they turn the fucking phones off. We might not know how to turn, take fucking change our drawers. Right. Yeah. And that's the. <laughs> but I don't really. Well, 
that predated the phone. So I think we could still do that. But I, no. I take your point that the people are way too dependent on phones, especially the younger generation. And uh, they can again, even... the parenting. You could make them put the fucking phone down as a parent, but most don't. Most parents And it's won't. hysterical that they won't let the kid... <laughs> we don't want the job be occupied. You won't let kid. the kid, like, walk to school alone because that's so dangerous. But you'll let him lock himself in the room at night with the phone where he can watch, I like, Japanese my, I would porn. never let my kids walk you to know, school. He can, he can watch a fucking team of businessmen come on a schoolgirl's face locked inside his room, but you can't let him walk to school alone. Well, my kids are not Jesus looking at porn that, yet. Though. I hope no, no kid Every kid is shit. watching. Some guy is a performer. I'm a performer. And everything I do, I'm a performer. Yeah. I, I, I mean, need to and, yeah. and a very yeah, compelling one. Yeah, I agree. You're, you are. I mean, people I are fascinated with you. I'm fascinated with you. I'm also fascinated with you. Oh, good. Well, I'm glad we're getting to You're know the first you... person I know that didn't believe in Jesus. That's just shocking, mind-boggling to me. That's oh, so... there's lots of people that don't believe in Jesus. Don't for example, the Jews. They have Jews for Jesus. Stop the bullshit, man. I've That's seen a... it. Okay, put put it have... on. Okay. Hey, hey, hello, okay, Mike, Jews Mike, for Mike, Jesus. Mike, 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 I'm not, I'm not arguing with it that they, there isn't such a thing as Jews for Jesus. It's a very small, <laughs> tiny, ridiculous sect. It's like Muslims for short shorts. It doesn't make any sense. Okay, it doesn't make any sense, and that's why there's just a handful of them in the world. There's some the version of everything. Guys. But generally, Jews do not, that's why they're Jews, believe that Jesus is God. He was a Jew, we know that. They just don't believe he's the Messiah. That's what a Jew is. I don't know if he's the Messiah. No, I'm just <clears throat> discussing that with Jesus. He's not. There's no such thing. It's something they made up. Okay, so last question. Yes. How do you feel? How do you, how do you, go feel, to how do you feel about Jesus. transgenders being able to compete in opposite gender, their original gender sports? Like, how do you well, feel? Well, I just go that? by what the what the women are saying. Women athletes. Yeah. Uh, who are saying it's not fair to us? That's not true. I know um, this one tennis player, Renee something. She used to get beat all the time. She she was a Renee gym. Richards. Is that her name? Yes. I mean, that she was one of the first transgender but people. But she didn't win no championships or anything? No, of course. It doesn't happen all the time. Oh. But, I mean, the big case now is this Leah Thomas. Yeah. This is someone who... She's uh, a bruiser? <laughs> she has a swimmer. She's a bruiser. Well, swimmer, I mean, right? swimmer? born a man, still has a penis, I believe. Um, well, you got the penis, you can't play, baby. No, she's Well, she playing. does. She, she's she winning championships. Yeah. I mean, when she was... Who the hell am I to talk? Well, that would be a great name for this podcast. Yeah, oh, I'm a, uh, who the hell who am I to talk, talk with Mike Tyson? But uh, she, uh, when she competed as a man, she was not winning. Yeah. And now as, as she's competing as a woman. She's winning a lot. I, I mean, but she, from what I've read, she has a penis and dates women. I don't know. That that sounds like I a would love for you to have a debate with her. It sounds like she just put on a wig. Like, Wouldn't you, you love know, for him to have a I, debate with that woman? You should have a debate with her. I, so, I don't want I, a debate. And look, it's a complicated issue. I mm -hmm. guess there are, it sounds to me like what they need is a third category. They yeah. need a category, a trans category, because it's it's obviously sometimes, often, I think, not fair to women. And that's what they said. Like, we're, we, we're competing against women. This is what Title IX was when they passed that 50 years ago. It was very important that women be able to have equal opportunity in sports against other women. Because obviously, Mike, can you imagine going into the ring against a woman with you in your prime, or even now? I mean, it would not, it would be a blood. Bath. For me, playing football. Well, or so football. Yeah. Exactly. Men and women are different. I mean, some of these things are just a priori uh, so what assessments. We gonna do? So listen, they allowed them to participate. Who are we to talk? What? If they allowed them to participate. Well, he asked me whether no, I, I thought it was whether thoughts. I thought it was it could fair be fair. Yeah, and he and said, and he said that he said that. They should probably create a dip, or their own well, category. Another league, yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, you know, you can't discount all these women who say it's unfair to me. No. I'm competing against essentially a man who has, you know, a testosterone. Even if they're taking hormones or something, there's a lot of it. Uh, they have bigger muscle mass. Yeah, big, you know, more bone uh, density. Yes. Yeah. I mean, even um, John McEnroe, I think it was, who said if Serena Williams played against. In the men's circuit, and Serena Williams, obviously, Beast. powerful and Beast. amazing athlete, he said she'd be like 700th in the world. And she even said once, when I played against a man, I didn't realize. 
They, I hit shots that no woman could get to, and he got to them easily. So obviously, there are differences between men and women. Could we just agree on that? Okay. I mean, maybe. Okay. Oh, yeah, you want to give him the oh, good Oh, I point? know what it is, and I know I'm going to love it. <laughs> oh. You got to open it. You gotta oh, I thought it was dope. Oh, no. <laughs> oh. I did, too. Oh, a shirt. I want this, too. That's good, too. That's very cool. I'm going to wear Oh, you, it's very soft. What are you soft doing sitting Oh, my so God. Uh, Mike, you could, you could jerk off into this. It's so soft. <laughs> Hey, it's so soft. Oh my God, that well, is a beautiful thing. I feel that. Yeah. Is that, that is actually really soft. That is that's really nice. a nice yeah, item. I, I mean, I've gotten huh? a lot of swag, and that's the nice one. But I really was hoping oh, yeah. I'd come here and get some so, of your pot. Too, because you could get you this have, at Hot Box. You have, Hello, come you have here. terrific pot. <laughs> oh, wait, don't forget this gift. Oh. This gift as well. Oh. Sacred Thank Box you. has come Sacred in. Box. Thank you, sir. Do I take these out? You, like. you can get this at Hot Box and Not Store. Beautiful. Well, there you have it, folks. Great discussions. It's Mike Tyson, Sebastian Joseph Day, the Chargers, Bill Maher. Check out Club oh, Random. Oh, yeah, I forgot to talk to all these guys. Talk about that for Club we Random. Have you were great on Club Random. And yeah, we have some, you can get it on YouTube and all the places you get your podcasts. And I'm having a ball doing it. You know, all talk shows, and this is essentially a talk show, even though we call it a podcast, mm -hmm. it's about the guy in the chair. You're the guy in the chair, and we'd love to see you and talk to you and hear you. Even when you say crazy things mm -hmm. and accuse me of things that aren't true that I, of course, amend right away, which is fine. I'm here to it's bounce good. it out. Right. That's I'm right. Here. I'm, I'm, here. <laughs> I'm here. To, I'm, here to, I'm here to check you when you try to put words in my I mouth. Make, I, I pick my amend. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know me. Apologies. It's great to see you.